Hey there, today I'm going to be ranking every song by Lana Del Rey. Or I'm gonna be ranking half of them, at least. I'm gonna split this up into two different parts. I just feel like if I split this up into two different parts, it'll give me more of a chance to explain myself instead of just throwing things into categories and leaving it at that. I'm gonna speed run some disclaimers here since this is already gonna be a long ass video. Uh, there's basically a 100% chance that you're going to disagree with some of my choices. That's perfectly fine and you're welcome to tell me what you disagree with and why as long as you're nice about it. <laughs> Number two, if I say that I dislike a song that you love, I promise it's not a personal attack against you or Lana. Um, even if I think some of her tracks here and there are duds, I truly think that she is one of the most talented and influential musicians that we've had in recent years. Um, there is not a single artist out there that I love every single song they've made. So I'm not trying to dismiss her talent if I make some jokes about some of her tracks that just don't really work for me. I promise I love Lana. <laughs> and lastly, I am a bit sick right now, so sorry if I sound a bit off. So this is the tier list on Tier Maker I'm going to be using. It was made by this Twitter handle down here, so credit to them for that. So let's just start off with Born to Die and get right into it with the title track. Okay, right off the bat, you guys are not gonna be happy with me. <laughs> I like it. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think I enjoy it as much as most of her fans do. Um, it's just missing a little something for me. I feel like if it had an interesting bridge, it might work a lot better for me because it would break up the second half a little bit. I just feel like once you hear the first verse and chorus, you've pretty much gotten the point. Again, it's not bad. It's just not one of my favorites. I'll put it in B. Off to the races. So this was my most listened to song of 2020, according to my Spotify rap that year. I don't know what that says about me, probably that I'm mentally ill, but I'm making a Lana Del Rey song ranking video, so you probably already knew that. I love how dramatic and cinematic this one is. I see an entire movie in my mind when I listen to this song. The songwriting and storytelling is amazing. The vocal delivery is unique. I've listened to this so many times and I never get bored of it. It's easily going in S. Blue Jeans. So this one is interesting for me because I actually didn't care for it much at first and it's really grown on me over the years. Now I feel like Megan McCain tweeting love you more than those bitches before on a biannual basis. I wouldn't say it's an all time favorite or anything, but looking back on this album now, I do think it's one of the better tracks. Again, it's like a whole movie in the form of a song. It's so melodramatic, it's going in A for me. Video games. So obviously this was the first Lana song I ever heard. I remember being however old I was when this came out and downloading this song onto my iPad mini with one of those weird third party apps where you could download YouTube videos. Um, I got pretty tired of it for a while because I overplayed it too much, but looking back on it now, it is a really great song. Um, also just so important and influential when it comes to the history of pop music. I am gonna put it in A. Although I feel like it could belong in S if I hadn't listened to it a hundred million billion times as a kid. Diet Mountain Dew. I am a little conflicted about this one because don't get me wrong, it is such a vibe, but I do feel the same way about it as Born to Die where I feel like it's so repetitive that it might be missing a little something for me. I feel like if I look at it objectively, it's probably one of the weaker tracks on the album. It just feels a little unfinished almost. It is really catchy. It just doesn't fully do it for me. I'll put it in C. National Anthem. I think this might be one of those instances, and this happens somewhat often with me, where I think I enjoy a song way more than I actually do because I like the music video so much. I know that this is kind of a fan favorite and I get it, but I hardly ever seek this song out unless I'm gonna watch the music video. I'm gonna put it in B. Dark Paradise. I feel like if you had to sum up this entire album using only one song, Dark Paradise would be the perfect option. Uh, this kind of feels like the centerpiece of Born to Die to me. It's so dramatic and theatrical and cinematic. The subject matter being about death relates perfectly to the album name. Um, I will say that this is not my personal number one favorite song on the album, but I totally get it. If it's yours, I'm gonna put it in S. Radio. I think that this is one of the better tracks on Born to Die and it does not get the credit it deserves. This song is so beautiful. It's a nice mix between being poppy and catchy, but also just being so Lana. I truly cannot believe that this wasn't released as a single. 
I guess it might have been because of the cursing in the chorus, but either way, this one just feels so instantly appealing, but not in a way that feels overly calculated or forced. I feel like it goes in either end of S or beginning of A. I think that since I'm hesitating, I'm gonna put it in beginning of A. Carmen. This song genuinely scared me as a kid. I don't even know exactly what it is about it that unsettled me. Um, there is something about the way that her vocals are just a little bit offbeat in the chorus that is a little bit eerie. Looking back on it now though, I feel like that actually makes me enjoy the track even more. I don't necessarily think it's one of the best on the album or anything, but I do have kind of a funny history with it, so it stands out to me. I'm gonna put it at the beginning of B. Million Dollar Man. I need you to listen to me for this one. This song is outrageously underrated. I feel like I never see anyone talk about this song ever. This is gonna sound ridiculous, but there was a lengthy point in time where this was my favorite track on Born to Die. It's not anymore, probably partially because I overplayed the absolute hell out of it, but I still think it deserves more credit. It is going in A. Summertime Sadness is kind of a hard one to rank, isn't it? I feel like I struggle with this one the same way I struggle with video games. I still think it's a good song, but it just feels a little watered down compared to her other songs for the sake of being commercially appealing. I'll put it in B. This is what makes us girls. I feel like this is one of those songs where it belongs so nicely to the album it's from, so I can appreciate it for that, but I hardly ever seek this song out on its own. I think it wraps all the ideas throughout the album up really nicely, but I just don't know if it can stand on its own. I feel like as part of the album experience, it belongs in B or maybe even A. As an individual song, I'm gonna put it in C. All right, we're getting into the bonus tracks, Without You. I find this song very forgettable. I don't have any major issues with it. I just constantly forget it's there. This almost feels like Lana writing a song on autopilot. Like it's fine and it fits the album well enough, but I don't think it provides anything new or exciting or all that impressive. I'll put it in D because I feel like if you were to erase this song from the universe, I might not even notice. Lolita. This one is interesting. <laughs> um, let me just say this because I don't feel like engaging in an actual super serious conversation about this song right now. The older I get, the less appealing this song is to me. I don't really find either the lyrical content or even just the sound of this song very enjoyable. I'm gonna put it in D. Please don't yell at me. <laughs> Lucky Ones. I used to really love this song and then I realized it's a little bit uninteresting. I think the songwriting is nice. It's simple and sweet. I just don't think it's powerful enough to make this song stand out when the rest of the parts are kind of underwhelming. It is going in C. All right, we're getting into Paradise and we're starting with Ride. Let's just make this short and sweet and put this one at the beginning of S. I can't even begin to describe to you how many times I've cried while listening to this song. It's embarrassing. It's just so grand and emotional and it hits so hard. And I can feel this song with my whole body when I listen to it. It gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, also has one of my favorite music videos of all time, so that helps too. American. I like this song. It's not really doing anything all that new or exciting. I think it's pretty, it's nice, but it's far from being mind blowing. I'm gonna go with B. Cola is simply iconic. I feel like the opening lyric to this song is both a blessing and a curse. Obviously, it instantly makes the track stand out, but at the same time, I feel like it's so jarring that it seems like the only thing people want to remember from the song. Like, it's the only reason I see people bring it up, which sucks because it's a good song. It also shows a whole different side to her vocals, which I can appreciate. I will put it in A. Body Electric. I think this song has a really unique mood to it. Obviously, a lot of her music has a lot of darkness to it, but I feel like this song specifically is very haunting. I don't know, there's just something about the production and the vocal delivery on this one that feels a little off, but like in a cool way. I'm gonna go with an A. Blue Velvet. I don't really know how to rank this one. I think it's a good cover. I think her voice suits it really well, but at the end of the day, it's just a simple cover. I feel like C feels right for this one. Gods and Monsters. Oh my god, this song. <laughs> I don't even know what it is about this song that makes it so great to me. 
Um, obviously, the writing is great, the production is great, but I feel like this song in particular pulls off the dark, gloomy mood that a lot of her other early music is aiming for so perfectly. It is going in S. Yayo. Um, let me start off by saying that I think the core of this song is good. However, as I established in my video on AKA Lizzie Grant, I don't really think the production of this version does the song any favors. I think it's overproduced. I feel like this song would shine so much better if it was scaled back like it was in the AKA Lizzie Grant version. I'm putting this in C. I like the song itself, but I do think that the production ruins it a little bit for me. Bel Air. Underrated song alert. This song is absolutely gorgeous. It makes me feel like I'm ascending. It's heavenly. It's angelic. How dare all of you neglect this. It's ridiculous. I'm putting it at the top of A. Burning Desire. I always forget this song exists because it doesn't automatically come up for me on Spotify and it's not on my physical version of the album either. It feels like a weird addition to Paradise because the production sounds so much more electronic than the other tracks. It feels a little out of place. I don't know. I don't really care for this one enough to ever seek it out. It's just okay. I will put it in D. All right, next I'm gonna do Young and Beautiful. Again, simply iconic. I don't necessarily think that this is one of her best and it's not one of my favorites, but I do definitely have a lot of nostalgia for it. I'm gonna put it in B. All right, and we are getting into ultraviolence now. Cruel World. I think that this is a great opener for the album. It sets the mood really well. I like how dynamic it is and how it keeps building up and down. I think that it's a fantastic first track. I'm gonna put it in A. Ultraviolence. I'm going to use a word that I've been trying not to overuse throughout this video. Atmosphere. It is so beautiful and so dark at the same time. It sounds dreamy. Um, this one has actually really grown on me over the years. I already loved it, but now it's one of my favorites. I'm going to put it in S. Shades of Cool. Obviously, the vocals and the chorus are gorgeous. The guitar solo slaps. The song makes me feel like I'm ascending. It's so dramatic. It's so ethereal. It's great. It is going in A. Brooklyn Baby. I feel like this is definitely the catchiest song on the album. I like that the lyrics here seem to have a little more, um, I don't think humor is the right way to put it, but they don't seem to take themselves as seriously. The only issue I have with this song is that I used to listen to it way too often to the point where it was concerning, but obviously that's not the song's fault. It's going in A. West Coast. There was a time when, if you had asked me what my favorite Lana song was, I probably would have said this one. And to be honest, I still almost stand by that, although I wouldn't say it's my number one anymore. Obviously that means it's going in S. The tempo change is amazing. The way the song slows down in the chorus makes me feel like I just got hit with a ton of bricks. Uh, perfect, amazing, fantastic. Sad Girl. There are definitely parts of this song that I enjoy. I think that the lyrics here are incredibly underwhelming. And that's a shame because I really like the sound of this one. Um, I don't think it's bad or anything. It just feels a little underbaked, especially because I think that the instrumental here had a lot of potential. I'll go with C. Pretty When You Cry. Okay, I'm aware of the fact that this song was improvised, which does make it more impressive, but I also want to try to be somewhat objective about it. Some of the lyrics here are underwhelming, understandably, but some of them are also pretty good, especially since they are improvised. Um, the bridge? Are you kidding me? I think that the buildup of it is great. I like the whole mood of it. I think it's cool. I'm just not crazy about it. I'll go with B. Money, Power, Glory. Underrated song alert. Again, it's back. I like how big the chorus feels on this one. This song makes me feel like I'm in a 40s femme fatale movie, which I'm very much into. Obviously, I don't mean that sonically. I just mean aesthetically. I like how different the narrative of this one is, where she's the one in control and she's the toxic one. I think it's an interesting change of pace. I like it. It's going in A. Fucked my way up to the top. Let me start off with the positives. I think it's cool of her to take a dumb insult that people use against her and make a passive aggressive song with it. I actually quite enjoy that. On the other hand, the fact that this somehow turned into a diss track against another female artist is weird to me, especially because the whole point of half the song is to make fun of the people who say that she fucked her way up to the top, which is great, but then she calls another female artist a whore, which is kind of like, what's the point here? I feel like these two things don't go together. Like, you, you can make separate songs 
it it's just it's weird together and also the vocal style that she uses in the chorus just doesn't really work for me i think it sounds interesting and different but it just doesn't really do it for me this is going in d old money i feel like this song is another one that doesn't get enough appreciation and i get it it's a pretty simple piano ballad. It's not all that exciting at first glance, but this track feels so genuinely emotional. I'm trying to figure out a way to word this that makes sense. Um, hopefully this gets my point across, but obviously Lana's music is very nostalgic. Um, when I listen to her songs, it feels like her looking back on things that have happened, but when I hear Old Money, it feels more in the moment, like she's singing about how she feels in that moment. I don't know, something about it just hits a little different. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of S. The Other Woman. Uh, once again, this is a cover which automatically makes it a little bit hard to judge. I think that it's a good enough cover and I think that it fits the album pretty well, but at the end of the day, it's very hard to compete with Nina Simone. I'm gonna put it in C. The radio mix of West Coast is here, which is kind of funny. <laughs> It's kind of just the same thing, except a little bouncier, a little peppier. I think some of the lyrics are also changed. I definitely prefer the original version, but I understand why someone might like the radio mix better too. Obviously, I still think that it's a really good song, so I'm gonna put it in A. Black Beauty. Oh my god, I've had so many mental breakdowns to this song. <laughs> I don't really know what to say other than the fact that I think this song is gorgeous and the lyrics are a little bit heart-wrenching. The fact that this is a bonus track is a little bit absurd. It's going in S. Guns and Roses. I think this might be the first song so far that I actually straight up dislike. Why does this exist? Why was this released? This feels like it was written in 10 minutes and they put a weird incomplete demo on the album. The verses are dull, the chorus is just her repeating he loved Guns N' Roses over and over, the instrumental is boring, this is going in F. By the way though, if you like that song, let me know what you like about it. I don't mean that sarcastically, I would just love to hear someone else's perspective if they're into this one. Florida Kilos. It's not awful. I like how it sounds a lot peppier and more upbeat. I can appreciate that it's trying to do something different. But dear God, the lyrics in this one, I just cannot handle for some reason. I guess if I try to think about it in more of a lighthearted way, it's not that bad. I don't know. There's just something about this song that I can't deal with for some reason, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm putting it in D. Is This Happiness? Uh, this song is so sad. <laughs> It is very pretty, although to be honest, I don't listen to it very often since it's not on streaming. This is so much better than Guns N' Roses and Florida Kilos though. I'm so mad that this isn't a bonus track on streaming or physical. I will put it in A. Flip side, I absolutely love most of this song. However, the production on this one is so strange compared to the other tracks. And I think it's messy on purpose, but I wish that the instrumental was just a little bit more clear. I have really sensitive ears and the mixing on this almost gives me kind of a headache. I don't know. I feel like this would easily be an S otherwise, but I'm leaning towards the beginning of B. Wait for Life. I don't know why this is here. <laughs> this list includes some of her collaborations and leaves others out. I don't know, dude. To be honest, I've heard this song like twice. <laughs> I do like it though. I remember thinking the chorus was really good. I should probably listen to it more. I don't really think I'm familiar enough with it to put it anywhere higher than B, but that could change. I'm just gonna have to hear it more often. Big Eyes. So here's the thing. I think the whole atmosphere of this song is nice and the vocal performance is good. This is probably the most lazily written chorus of her entire career. <laughs> Actually, Guns N' Roses exists, so I don't know. But um, it could have easily been so much better with just a little bit of extra effort. It's going in D. I Can Fly. I like this one, but I don't really think there's anything special enough about it to make it stand out. I think the atmosphere of this one is pretty too, but considering that applies to a lot of her songs, that's not really enough. It is nice though. I feel like I'm being a little too mean to these two soundtrack songs. I feel neutral. I'm gonna put it in C. All right, let's get into Honeymoon and start with the title track. I think that this track is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's hypnotic. It's also such a slow burn with the way it picks up ever so slightly in the bridge. I get why it's not for everyone. It definitely requires more patience than a lot of her other music, but I think it's worth it because it's beautiful. I'm gonna put it towards the top of A. Music to watch boys too. 
Um, this is gonna sound like an insult, but I promise it's not. This is a perfect song to zone out to. I feel like I go into a trance as soon as I hear this. There's something about the production here that once again is very hypnotic. It doesn't blow me away or anything, but it's definitely a vibe. I'm gonna put it in B. Terrence loves you. This song makes me ugly cry. <laughs> it just feels like a hug. I have such a personal emotional attachment to it. As a massive Bowie fan, the interpolation of Space Oddity literally makes me feel like I'm levitating or something. I love the way it builds up in the bridge. This is one of her best songs, and while you're allowed to have your own opinion, you better agree with me on this one S easily. God knows I tried. I like the guitars in this one. I like how the sound feels a little heavier than the other tracks on Honeymoon. I also really like the emotion behind this one. I can definitely feel it. My issue with this song, and it kills me to do this because I like the rest of it, is that it's incredibly repetitive and I feel like I can't let that slide. I'm gonna put it in B. High by the Beach. This is far from being one of my favorites on the album. I don't really get anything from this song other than the fact that it's kind of catchy. I feel like it's kind of just here because the album needed a lead single that was a little more accessible. I'm gonna put it at the end of C. Freak. Another one that is incredibly hypnotic. All of the songs on this album and just her music in general are incredibly cinematic, but this one specifically just makes me feel fully immersed in the music. I also like how this one continues with trap beats like on High by the Beach. Um, they feel like they fit the mood of the album so much better here. I'm going with A. Art Deco. This is going to sound incredibly hypocritical, um, but whatever, this is my list. For some reason, the fact that this song is so repetitive doesn't actually bother me here, and I don't know why. It might be because I find this song so much more about the mood and vibe rather than the lyrical content or the emotion behind it. It's so dreamy and ethereal, it reminds me of Summer Nights. I'm gonna put it in A. Burnt Norton. <laughs> I don't know how to judge this. It's a spoken word interlude with somebody else's poem. What am I supposed to do here? I will say that I actually really like this as an interlude, but considering I kind of have to judge it as an individual song, I think I'll put it in D. I do think it's great within the context of the album though. Religion. This one is nice and I feel like I have nothing else to say. It's definitely not a standout on the album. I don't really think it has anything going on that sets it apart. I also don't really have anything negative to say about it though. It's just a little unmemorable. I'll put it in C. Salvatore. I think that this chorus makes me feel like I'm floating. Uh, this album in general kind of makes me feel like I'm floating. I think the vocals here are really pretty, although some of the lyrics do feel a little goofy and I don't even know if that's on purpose or not. Either way, I think it's a nice song. It's just far from being flawless. I'm gonna go with B. The Blackest Day. Oh man, this song really does it for me. This is one of my favorites on the album and even just overall. The emotion of it feels so raw. The whole song just feels and sounds so big. The post-chorus hits so hard. The bridge is amazing. I listen to this song constantly and I've never gotten tired of it. I'm confidently putting it in S. 24. I like the theatrical vocal delivery on this one. Other than that, not much about this one stands out to me. I don't love the lyrics here. I think they're kind of uninteresting. I'm gonna put it in D. Swan Song. This one is a little dark lyrically. I think that this would make for a great closer. I don't know why in the world it's not a closer. I do like the songwriting here. Um, maybe this is just because of its spot in the track list, but I do kind of feel like it's just rehashing ideas from earlier in the track list. I don't really think it stands out, but I'll put it in C because I like the lyrics and the metaphor. Don't let me be misunderstood. I usually like Lana's covers. Um, obviously based on my rankings here, they don't blow me away or anything, but I at least think they're worthy of existing. I do not like this cover. I wish it wasn't on the album, and I do not understand why Swan Song wasn't the closer. This one is going in F. Also, I don't know why Stargirl Interlude is here considering it's not even her song, but it's going in S, enough said. 
Okay, so this is gonna seem like a weird choice, but I think I'm gonna speed through Lana Del Rey, aka Lizzie Grant now before I end the video. I know it doesn't make that much sense to do it now, but I didn't wanna start off with it because I'm not as familiar with this album. I also have a whole video about this album, so I might do these just a little bit more quickly. Kill Kill. I like the vibe and aesthetic of this one. It feels like a 40s noir movie. I am gonna put it in B. Queen of the Gas Station. I feel pretty neutral about it. I don't really have any strong thoughts. It's fine. It's whatever. I'll put it in C. Oh Say Can You See. This is one of my favorites from the album. I think that the lo-fi stripped back production of it suits it really well. I'm gonna put it in A. Grandma. This one is unsettling. It has an interesting energy to it. I don't really like it though. I'm gonna put it in D. For K part two. I think that this one is really pretty. It's probably my favorite on the album. I am gonna go with A for this one. Jump. I think that this one is nice. It's been stuck in my head ever since I reacted to the album. It's not her greatest work or anything, but I enjoy it. I'm gonna put it towards the beginning of B. Mermaid Motel. So this is the one that broke my brain when I listened to the album and I'm still conflicted because don't get me wrong, I hate this song. I think it's incredibly messy and chaotic, but at the same time, I have so much respect for it because I've never heard anything like it. So I think that for the sole fact of this being such a strange and interesting experience of a song, I will spare it from going in F and I'm gonna put it in D because at least you can't call it boring. Raise Me Up, I can appreciate what she was going for with the grungier sound here, but I'm not really into it, I'll put it in D. Pawn Shop Blues, I really love this song. I think it's really pretty. I like the songwriting. This is one of my favorites off this album, so I'm gonna put it in A. Bright Lights, I can't believe Lana invented Hyperpop. Anyways, I don't like this one. I don't know what's going on here. I'm gonna put it in F. Put Me In A Movie, I don't know where to rank this one. Um, here's the explanation I'll go with. It makes me uncomfortable. I would never go out of my way to listen to it. I'll put it in D. Smarty, another very catchy one. It's fun. I'm gonna put it in B. And finally, Yayo. As we established earlier, I prefer this version of this song. I think the more stripped back acoustic sound for this one fits it better. I'm gonna put it in B. And we're done. Okay, I saved the image, so I will put it up on the screen so you can see my final ranking of the first half of her songs. And yeah, I'll be back to do the second half of her songs at some point. Anyways, that's all for me for now. I know I've been getting some requests to do some Lana content, and unfortunately I can't react to her albums because I've already heard them all, <laughs> um, other than the Lana Del Rey aka Lizzie Grant video that I already did. So hopefully this is kind of a nice compromise. Anyways, as always, social media will be linked below. Feel free to subscribe if you're interested and feel free to recommend other video ideas. And uh, have a great rest of your day. See ya.